Hey everyone, Sir Owen Disney here, and uh, I will apologize right off the top here. Um, like I said, I have been really like working like crazy lately. Um, uh, higher ups were in, and uh, we had to uh, be at work really early this morning, so I was not able to shoot the video when it was officially announced for the final house for Halloween Horror Nights 23, but now I'm more than welcome to do that. I'm not really that awake, so if I'm rambling, I'm sorry, I just, yeah, I'm just trying to get that there. So, let's talk about the last house, shall we? And I just finished watching Dr. Jimmy's decryption of Christine and Eraser. So I do want to mention those real quick. So those basically, Christine was Resident Evil. Yeah, just like everyone thought it was. But not the reason I said it wasn't have anything to do with Four Eyes or didn't have anything to do with anything that I mentioned in my prediction video. No. The reason why is because apparently if you play Resident Evil 5 on the PC, there is a code. If you log in the character name Christine, it's a cheat code that gets you weapons. So, very clever, Dr. Jimmy. Very clever coming up with something that no one would be able to figure out as you are so awesome at doing, and I very much like putting you over because you're awesome, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you at Halloween Horror Nights 23, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be a really good possibility because I've kind of got a little bit of a stake in that, but we'll talk about that. The final house, let's talk about it right now. So, the city has been quarantined as the virus had spread. There once was this company, it was the largest and most powerful commercial entity in the world. They had been developing experimental viral weaponry with the hopes of changing the course of human development. Now, its political and financial influence were felt everywhere. In public, it was the world's leading supplier of computer technology, medical products, and healthcare. Unknown even to its own employees, its massive profits were generated by this military technology, genetic experimentation, and viral weaponry. But there was an incident. See, the virus escaped, and everybody died. Trouble was, they didn't stay dead. Are you ready to face evil? So, that was by my good friends at Horror Night Updaters. And basically, this all led up to the decryption officially of the final house, the eighth house of Halloween Horror Nights 23, will be Resident Evil Escape from Raccoon City. So, apparently, um, Mike Aiello is over in Japan right now getting their street experiences ready for their Halloween Horror Night celebration and putting over Resident Evil, and of course that's uh, where he tweeted this from. He said this is basically going to be based on Resident Evil 2 and 3, which is Resident Evil 2 and uh, Resident Evil Nemesis. So, apparently, from what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing here, the facade for the house is going to be Arukus, which apparently is the first stage of Resident Evil 2. Now, we're going to be seeing liquors and dogs, and even the nemesis is going to rear his ugly head. And apparently it's not going to be very heavy on zombies because, yeah, Resident Evil uh, does have zombies in it. Yes, this is true. But Cabin in the Woods is going to have zombies in it this year, of course. And definitely The Walking Dead is all over the entire park. AMC presents the Halloween Horror Nights 23. So, yeah, needless to say, we got enough zombies. We got zom We're up to our heads in zombies. So yeah, no zombies in uh, Resident Evil. There might be a few here and there, but not many, if at all. So this is something I read too, and this sounds really awesome. There was an image that was released, basically says like, game pause, mission continue. And apparently there is going to be a room in the house that is actually going to be a battle that is ongoing 
in a pause state. So everybody is going to be battling, and then all of a sudden, it's going to pause. And everyone's going to be in suspended animation. And you'll probably have to walk through them. That's going to be really freaky, to be totally honest. So, the exterior of the Raccoon City Police Department police station is involved. And that's going to be where you're going to battle Nemesis. At least one time you battle Nemesis. I don't know if you battle Nemesis more than once. I'm guessing probably. Because that's basically what we're building towards. But yeah, you're going to face Nemesis at the police department. So, there's going to be the classic Resident Evil. It's going to be in there, of course. And I'm going to go and say, Get ready for reality to be transformed into a surreal fight for survival as horror video game series Resident Evil completes the haunted house lineup for Halloween Horror Nights 23. You will enter Raccoon City and attempt to escape the horrors contained within, if you can. So, that's Resident Evil. And uh, Dr. Jimmy also decrypted Eraser as well. Eraser, of course, everyone knew uh, was based off uh, American Horror Story. And apparently Eraser is based upon, the cryptic comment for Eraser is based upon the first series season, which is Murder House. I'm not uh, an American Horror Story fan. But uh, apparently there was a character called the Rubber Man. And Rubber Man Eraser makes sense, makes complete sense. Or the second season which is Asylum, there is, uh, like, an ongoing commentary of, like, erasing your memories throughout. So he dropped three more cryptic comments, and they may or may not see the light, see the light of day. A Boreal, which, of course, originally was going to go to, like, kind of like an evil takes root, like a scare zone, basically. And there were going to be tree spirits, and... They still might end up at the front gate, so pretty much once you walk in, it's all Walking Dead all the time. But apparently, at Central Park, there is the Woodlands, and that may be a boreal. That makes sense. Lumberjacks apparently was going to be a chainsaw drill team with, or tree spirits with chainsaws. But apparently the survivors in the clear are going to have chainsaws as well, so, uh, Hollywood Boulevard will be where the clear is. And um, the third one was alcohol, and apparently that was going to be based upon a Resident Evil street experience. Why? Well, just like Dr. Jimmy says, what is alcohol another word for? The word is liquor. Get it? Liquor. Yeah, so yeah. But there's also maybe a, a, a correlation towards the survivor camp that's at Kid Zone. And they have, like, like the, the Bray Wyatt-style uh, kerosene lamps. So, yeah, that, that requires alcohol as well to uh, power them. So, yeah, that's what we've got so far. And um, I haven't done my full reveal yet, reveal video yet, talking about all the experiences and what my opinions are for everything. I will do that in the next uh, coming days. I have to get a couple things straight. First, I want to bring up a little email that Sir Owen Disney looked at. Actually, I want to talk about it right now, so let's go to it. All right, uh, Horror Nights... Wow, long day. HalloweenHorrorNights.com finally, finally switched over. Everything is in. The full reveal is in. And P.S. is still alive for the time being. So uh, I'm going to guess we're going to find out his or her fate once uh, the final like, house reveal video is posted on HalloweenHorrorNights.com. But I do want to talk about something real quick. Um, two things. Number one, I want to talk about annual pass holder nights, okay? So, annual pass holder nights, I'm going to talk about what you got here. So, on opening night, September 20th, my birthday, September 21st, September 27th, and September 28th, they're all going to be annual pass holder nights. And I know there was a comment on one of the videos that someone was asking me what this entails. So this is for you out there. I'm guessing you're still watching these videos. So apparently from 5 to 6, you're going to be able to enter a special area, which is by Kid Zone, and you and one guest, of course I'm not bringing you on because I'm by myself, will enjoy the following things. Number one, there's going to be early event access through an exclusive entrance located at the front of Universal Studios. Yeah, you're basically, you check in and you go right in. It's like to the right-hand side and everything's good to go. 
excuse me. Two, you have exclusive pass holder early access to three designated haunted houses. The Walking Dead is one of those houses. So, for all the craziness that was caused by lines last year, they're actually giving us Walking Dead as annual pass holders before the public. So you can do Walking Dead and get it out of the way and get away from that area before it becomes a giant cluster like it's going to be because Walking Dead is going to be in the parade building. The other two houses will be uh, La Llorona and uh, Afterlife Death's Vengeance. They are going to be the sprung tents so uh, where Alice Cooper and Penn and Teller were last year. And of course parade building is where uh, House of Horrors was last year. So those are going to be the three houses you're going to be able to hit up. So that's good to go. You're going to be able to get food and drink available. You can maybe get your hands on some of that really awesome Halloween Horror Nights food that I was not able to have yet. But I put it over because everyone else says it's going to be great. And I'm looking forward to getting some deep fried candy bars this year. Maybe the Twisted Taters. Might have to get one of those. Might be a good possibility. Sorry, when I say the word Taters, I just go right into a redneck accent. I apologize. No disrespect. But uh, this also gets you the... Early access to the first showing of Bill and Ted. And uh, that is also going... They don't mention it here, but you're going to be able to also get either a a pin or, like last year, a dog tag that is for annual pass holders only for uh, Halloween Horror Night. So there'll be shirts, all sorts of various merchandise available. All this stuff will be available and we'll be able to have that access to it. So you have those four days. So you have... Friday and Saturday of opening weekend, and uh, you have uh, Friday and Saturday of the second weekend. So, yeah. Those are all annual pass holder days. You can RS RSVP right now at uh, universalorlando.com uh, backslash RSVP backslash HHN23 backslash RSVP dot ASPX. And uh, that's pretty much what I have... You put in your pass order ID, it's at the very bottom of your annual pass, and your last name, and it'll check you in. You just bring the email that you got, because I just got three emails, because I have now officially, <laughs> excuse me, checked in for the annual pass holder nights of the 20th, the 21st, and the 28th. Mm. That's not the only thing I want to talk about. Uh, just announced were the R.I.P. Tours, and yeah, I'm going to be doing an R.I.P. Tour this year, and uh, this sounds really awesome. So apparently what we've got, I'm Masking the Horror, which has two sh a day. Now, what it is, Unmasking the Horror, you get to uh, go with someone in A&D, and they will take you on a walking tour, a lights-on walking tour of three haunted houses. Now, what I'm hearing, and this could be very true... They're about two to two and a half hours. You go through all the tours, you ask questions. There's no more than 15 guests per guide. So you also get a commemorative uh, Halloween Horror Nights lanyard for uh, your participation in the uh, RIP tour. Or the Unmasking the Horror tour. Either one of the, the RIP tours. Unmasking the Horror also has something really awesome, too. There is what they call Morning Menace at 1030, and it's $60. And then there is Afternoon Abominations at 2 o'clock, which is $60. But if you take place in both of them, it's 100 bucks plus tax, of course. But the cool thing is, if you take place in both of them, you take part in both of them, not take place in both of them, take part in both of them, you know what you actually get? According to somebody on one of the Facebook pages, I don't remember exactly who said it. I don't remember which page it was on, so don't quote me on it. I will say this, there are very good possibilities you will get six different houses. So I would say, if I had to guess, I'm going to say you're going to get Havoc, Resident Evil, Evil Dead, The Cabin in the Woods, An American Werewolf in London, uh, probably La Llorona, if I had to guess. That would be the ones I would predict. I'm not positive, though. I'm not positive at all. So, I guess we'll find out, and I think it's going to be really awesome to be able to get in that. I don't know if The Walking Dead would be in one of them or not. Walking Dead, maybe. Uh, Walking Dead, La Llorona, and, um, Afterlife, Death Ven Death's Vengeance 
would possibly be the three, and then maybe um, maybe Evil Dead, Resident Evil, and I don't have the map in front of me. Uh, it's not official though, so I mean it's kind of like a thrown up. So that's what I'm thinking. So yeah, that's what we've got right now, and that sounds really awesome. I'm very interested in. I'm going all out this year, folks. I really am. And, uh, like I said, going to the Tim Tracker's really awesome, uh, YouTube meetup on my birthday, the 21st. I actually just, uh, went through and, uh, I feel bad about this, but it's for the greater good. For the greater good. So, yeah, um, basically I went and canceled my reservation of the 21st. Um, I will not be spending my birthday at all at Disney. I will actually spend my debt birthday at Universal, so... I uh, changed my LaCellier reservation to the 23rd, which is my eight parks in one day. So, that's all taken care of. So, once again, it's been a really fun time uh, revealing these various Halloween Horror Nights haunted houses. And this is the final reveal of the final house of Halloween Horror Nights 23. Once again, I definitely want to give big shout outs to everyone in the Halloween Horror Nights updaters community. <laughs> Dr. Emmett Brown 1, a.k.a. Vic, HHN Trogdor, HHN Legacy. I do want to thank Psycho Massacre Films, I, Dr. Jimmy, most definitely, and um, Admiral HHN. I do want to thank all the awesome people that I have read. I've seen all their updates. I've followed everything, and I'm now one of you, and I'm very happy to be proud and very proud to be one of you. So hopefully you uh, guys accept me out there for... Uh, like I said, I'm new to this, but we'll see what we can do, and um, I've had a great time revealing everything. This video will be up very soon, and uh, you'll be good to go on that. I will have my full explanation of the entire event in the uh, next coming week. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but it's going to come up. I promise you. If you like these videos, tell your friends about them. Leave a comment. Do subscribe, 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 and... Uh, Spread the word about Pop and the Popcaster Revolution. If you want to tweet me, you're more than welcome to. It's at Sir Owen Disney. If you want to email me, go right ahead. Sir Owen Disney at gmail.com. If you want to uh, find me on Facebook, you can friend me more than welcome to. Owen Disney, very easy to find. It's me drinking a frozen lemonade from Halloween Horror Nights last year. It was actually taken right in front of uh, <clears throat> Mel's right before I went in. I took the photo just because I wanted to take a, a photo as a goof. And it's the picture I use for everywhere. It's even the picture I use for Pop, so. In the meantime, thank you guys and girls out there for watching. I will continue to make Halloween Horror Nights updates as we progress further on. And I will talk more and more about Halloween Horror Nights 23. We're going to get some really good uh, footage for the channel as best I can. If I'm able to film in the houses via the YouTube meetup, I'm going to. So we'll see what we can do with that. And until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all i got to say about that.